today's video, we're going to be checking out the new Playmates Toys Rise of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. This is the wild card, Michelangelo. As the youngest turtle, Mikey has a wild and colorful personality. He is an artist and spends his time tagging the turtle's lair and his shell with graffiti. He is an eternal optimist and an absolute natural at ninjutsu. To figure out how tall Michelangelo stands, we're going to put the tape measure right next to him and putting it to the top of his head. The figure stands 4.4 inches. That in centimeters works out to be 11.2. And how does Mikey stack up with his other brothers? There he is next to Leonardo. Leonardo's a little bit taller than him, as could be said for Donatello. And poor Mikey is towered over, as well as the rest of his brothers, by the very large... Raphael. Mikey's accessories, he'll also include the same shurikens that we've seen with all the other brothers. Same cast gray plastic with three individual, well, three blades, little three spikes on each end. One, two, three. There's no real place where you can store them on the turtle. I guess in theory you could put it like, you could attach it in this section right here, but it's not really intended to be there. So you can either display it in his hands, or you can just leave them right off. And uh, he holds these shurikens in place like that. Like I said, there's no other place where you can store them. Also included with the figure, I'll just put him down here for a second. He comes with a skateboard. And the skateboard has the new Turtles logo on the top, which is the same logo that's on their straps. I think they said they were communicators, but they're just, I think there's just the Turtles symbols. Um, the skateboard is a little on the longer side than if you compare it to Leonardo's. Leonardo's was also made of translucent plastic, whereas Mikey's is made of a, just a solid plastic. One thing about, um, I just want to show you like Leo's skateboard, for example, rolls fine and uh, doesn't, doesn't move or anything like that. The reason why I showed you that is the thing with Mikey's, there's a little bit of, I don't know if it's intentional or just the way that they plugged it in place, but there's almost a little bit of suspension to it. It means that when you are attaching the turtle to his skateboard, like that, when you put him down, you'll notice that the figure kind of rocks back and forth a little bit. And sometimes, if you're not careful, it can topple right over. So he just has a little bit of extra, something I just want to point out, a little bit of extra suspension happening. Again, I'm not really sure if it's intentional or not, or just the way that they they built it, but uh, this does rock a little bit back and forth, more so on the front than it does on the back. Put that right there. Mikey also comes included with a pair of Kasari Fundo. Now, what these are is essentially they're chains. The description, I think, of Kasaris are they're chained items with usually a weight on the end. And the weights in this case, one is a punching glove and then the other one looks like it's uh, almost like a disc like a bladed almost like a flowered disc it looks like there's blades on the end of it these are made of translucent plastic it's slightly jarring to see a turtle not with his regular weapons i always usually think michelangelo for example as nunchucks but here in this case he comes with the kasari those just slide into his hands like so like that and they sit well in his hands. I mean, they're not, they're not going to go anywhere. But there is also this clamp right here, this little clip. You can take one of them, only holds one, and you can attach it to his chest. Now, this looks a little silly attaching it like this. So you may want to just turn it around. Turn it around. There we go. I'm going to turn it around. And you can just attach it like that. At least it's out of the way. And uh, the, the figure's arms are still going to be able to move if you want to display it like that. The other thing he comes included with is like a sectional staff. I don't think these are still categorized as nunchucks, but it's made up of three components, three sections, and each of the sections are connected by what I could believe is as a chain, sort of like a sectional staff. 
Um, it doesn't have anything bending to it, nor would you want to bend it because you are going to develop a little stress mark and break it. But they are nicely sculpted, despite for the fact that the draw in them is that they're making use of, of a translucent orange plastic, which just looks awesome. But uh, they are sculpted as well. A little nice detailing that they've added to the handle portions. And you can also take that and attach it into his hand. Now the thing is with these, you're probably only going to want to display them in one of his hands unless you have the unless you have it this way. And when you have it this way, it sort of mimics more so looking like something Donnie would be wielding than something Michelangelo would be wielding. I personally would have loved to see him also include some nunchucks, but instead he gets the uh, the Kasaris, and he also gets the sectional. I think it's still. I don't think it cl is classed as a nunchuck. I think it's still it's classed as a sectional staff, but he comes with he comes with that. This is pretty cool. Let me just put the figure down here for a second. For Michelangelo, as he does like graffiti, he comes with a series of stickers, and these are all stickers that you can peel off and put where really at wherever you want. There is a some space, little few areas here on his shell that I guess you could put some of the stickers on there. I mean, some of the stickers are really neat. Like, I like the skull and the crossbones there. I'll probably have to find a place to put that. And there's, like, chili pepper. Uh, what else do we have here? Ice cream, donuts, fire, sandwich. Oh, there's a little poop. Alien and some french fries and a whole bunch of other stuff. So he comes with those as well. Let's have a look at Michelangelo, now that we've kind of covered off on everything else. Much like all the other turtles, how I said that each of the turtles is a different species, uh, Michelangelo here is a box turtle. So he's a little bit on the smaller side, although he has a much bigger shell than, say, the soft shell uh, turtle uh, that was Donatello. He's got some nice coloring, though. I don't know if the coloring is as good as, as close as it was in the series, but it's almost like this nice... Um, very light, light shade of, uh, of green. It's almost like a mint green. Um, I like the face sculpt. I like that he does have a smile. In fact, really, all the turtles, I guess, well, I guess that's not true. Donatello really doesn't have a smile, but three of the four do have smiles on them. And he's got some graffiti there on his softer shell, which is made of a softer plastic. Paints nice and good on it. I, his little logo there on his strap uh, is has a nice lime green with an orange on the top. And I realized as well, like with all the, uh, the other indicators, each turtle will have its own corresponding color. The symbols right there, the little shell logos, will also have the T. I'm guessing that is the T in the corresponding color there of the turtle. Michelangelo's is orange, Donatello's is purple, and so on and so forth. Nice little detailing as well. They've incorporated these little smiling faces and sad faces on his knee pads. He is only one of two turtles that have knee pads. The other one is Donatello. And I really like the shell. The shell is one of my favorite things about it. And he's got a little smaller of a bandana than uh, the other turtles there. Uh, what's... I noticed just now that Donatello doesn't quite even have a bandana. Well, he does, but uh, the ribbons, the parts that stick out from the back there, are much smaller than the other turtles. I just noticed that now. But you see the difference in shells, the soft shell, versus the shell of the box turtle. His hands are sculpted, I, I've also noticed as well, in a way that his fingers are stretched. I thought it might have played more into holding the shurikens that you can then have them in between those fingers, but it doesn't seem like that's the case. So he just he just has the, the stretched out fingers. And I guess it leads a little bit more into the way that he's holding the weapons um, versus, say, the other turtles. He's got a little bit more of a grip around his weapons, for example. Okay, so let's have a look at this guy's posability. Now, it's pretty much the exact same as all the other turtles that we've looked at. Ball joint in the head, universal joints in the shoulders, and whatnot. His head does rotate, like I said, on that ball joint. Rotates around. I do notice, though, that with Mikey, his shell seems higher. So as a result of that, when you're moving his head, you may find that the head rubs up against the back of the shell. 
you might want to just angle the head downward and then rotate it like that. Uh, the arms hinge out as a universal joint. You can also rotate them all the way around like that. He also has rotation in the forearm, which also allows the forearms to bend. And he has a swivel in the wrist. The legs move forward and back. And it's one of those joints, I know I've said this in the other Turtles reviews, if you see the joint right there, it only allows the leg to hinge forward like this. If, for example, you want to move the leg this way, you would have to rotate the hinge this way to bring out the leg. You wouldn't be able to... You can still turn them, but you wouldn't be able to bring them forward and back unless the hinge is facing the direction in which you want to turn it. Has a bend at the knee there, and you can also rotate the lower leg, and you can also rotate the feet. So not only are these colorful turtles, but they are also very poseable. It usually goes without saying that when Playmates does do their turtles lines, the turtles always get you know, lots of posability happening to them. And as really they should, being that somebody, you know, the turtles have trained in ninjutsu, you of course would want to be able to have them super posable. Um, what, one thing as well that you can incorporate, being that these are more posable turtles, you can get a little bit more creative with their poses. If you do find like the figures topple over, you can also make use of a display stand. Or in, in the case of, of uh, Michelangelo, you can also make use of his skateboard. But again, I'm really liking this, this toy line. I generally get pretty excited whenever a brand new turtle line comes out. It just so happens that I'm also digging the cartoon in which the turtles are based from. Having a look at now all four turtles, I think my favorite is Donatello. Although Raphael is no slouch. I like the big bulkiness of the snapping turtle. And that's something, again, that I really like that this particular series has played into that the turtles look different because they're taken from different turtle species. Michelangelo being the box turtle, he's a little bit smaller than the other three brothers, but he's very colorful. And that's one thing that all of the turtle toys seems to be consistent with. They're all very colorful, poseable toys. If you guys are interested in picking up any one of these, the four turtles that we had a look at, or the rest of the Rise of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle lineup, you can check them out at your local toy stores and retail stores as they are now currently being stocked. We're going to have a look at some more Turtles toys and some upcoming video reviews, but make sure you've hit that little subscribe button down below. That's crucial to guarantee you that when new videos are coming onto this channel, you'll never miss out. As always, guys, thanks for watching, and let me know down below what you think of the rise of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles cartoon. I'll see you guys next time.